Bienvenidos, Hushamdi, and welcome to this HUD8 networking tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about summarization in EIGRP, the real benefit. Now, in most CCNA courses, you're taught that the true benefit of summarization in EIGRP and in pretty much every routing protocol is the fact that you end up with fewer routes in your routing table. Now, while that is a side effect of summarization with the IGRP, it is not the true benefit. So the real benefit in terms of summarization in EIGRP is limiting the size and the scope of your query domain. Remember, those query messages are going to be sent out when routes are lost, and the smaller you can keep that query domain, the quicker your network is going to converge. Again, reducing the number of information or the amount of information in the routing table is certainly a side effect. But when we talk about the true benefits, it's all about limiting the size and scope of the query domain. So let's take a look at how that's going to happen. So I'm actually teaching a CCMP route course right now at the University of Maryland University College. And today I'm on my lunch break and I typically go running. However, it's pouring down rain. So I figured I would go ahead and throw together a quick video here. Now, this is the topology that we're dealing with. Over on router 10 to the far right of the screen, I have four loopback addresses defined. So let's go ahead and take a look at these loopback addresses. So we'll go from user exec to privilege exec into global config. And I'm going to be shutting a few of these down. So we'll say do show IP interface brief. Now, the four loopback addresses that we're concerned with are 32 through 35. And these are going to summarize very nicely. Uh, so again, these are the addresses. So we're basically pretending we've got four networks here, 172, 16, 32, 33, 34, and 35. Now, what I'm going to demonstrate first is what happens when we're not summarizing. If I were to go all the way over here, so we come all the way over to the left-hand side of the topology under router one, and let's go from user exec and a privilege exec, and let's say show IP route EIGRP, and let's make sure that we trim this down to only the 172.16s that we're interested in seeing. So as part of the course, I had some external information, but there are the four networks. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna show you just how far the query domain extends right now by typing in debug EIGRP packets query detail. Now, this is going to show us any query messages that are going to be showing up here on router one. Remember, if we take a quick peek back, router 10 is all the way over here on the right hand side and router one is over here. And when we remove a network, one of these loop back addresses, or interfaces, as we shut it down on router 10, a query is going to get sent to 9. 9, which currently has that individual network, is then going to send a query to 8. And 8 is going to send queries out. And you can see what's going to happen here. And there are going to be a lot of query messages that end up getting sent. And so ultimately, those query messages, as I get the last couple arrows in here, will make their way from router two over to router one. And so this is a lot of query messages, right? We've got quite a diameter here in the network. And so let's see what that looks like and the impact that that's going to have on every single router in the topology. So I'm gonna move over here to router 10 and we're gonna go ahead and say interface loopback 35 and we'll pick on loopback 35 and I'm simply gonna shut that interface down. Now you'll notice a little blue yield sign popped up here on router one, meaning that we've got some output on router one that we need to check out. And sure enough, there it is. There's the query message that originated over on router 10. And remember, even though router 10 is the originating router for that loopback network that we're using, it still is going to generate a query message. It's a directly connected network, but it still generates a query with the IGRP because it's gonna reach out to its neighbors and ask the neighbors, hey, 
do you know how to get to this network? Because I no longer do. So the query message comes all the way over here and you can see there's the route that the query message was for. And now you're going to have reply messages that have to go all the way back to router two, three, four, five, et cetera, indicating no, I don't know how to get to that network. I have no alternative path to get there. So here is where summarization really comes into play in EIGRP, because now we're going to be talking about how we can bound, right, or bound, uh, bind the query domain to the neighbor that's directly connected to the router performing the summarization. And so how would we do that? Well, if I'm performing summarization here on router 10, and first let me bring that interface back up, we would be doing summarization on those four networks right there. Now, as a brief reminder, on how summarization is performed, we look for the interesting octet, which is going to be the third octet right here. And we take those decimal values and we convert them into binary. So 32 in binary would be 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. 33 is simply going to have that bit on. 34 would have this bit and 35 would have one one in the last two bits. And again, I'm going to leave all the zeros out here. So imagine there's all zeros to our left there. I'll keep it in there. And so what you're going to see is that our summarization, the first 16 bits match. Now these additional six bits in the third octet match, it's going to give us a slash 22 because eight plus eight is 16 and six is 22. So we have our subnet mask length, and that's going to allow me to perform the summarization. The value in the third octet will be 32 because that value matched or this bit position matched on all four of the networks we're trying to summarize. So we're looking at a 172.16.32.0 slash 22 or 255.255.252. So let's make that summarization happen here in EIGRP by first taking a look at do show run section router EIGRP. What does our EIGRP configuration look like? And we're running named mode. And so it's going to look a little more um, a little more busy here than it does with your typical legacy configuration. Now remember, with classic numbered 32-bit mode, right, which is our legacy EIGRP configuration syntax, I would do the summarization directly on the physical interface facing the router to whom I wish to summarize these four networks. However, in named mode, we don't go to the physical interface, we go to the address family interface. So let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to say router EIGRP CCIE and we're going to go into address family IPv4 autonomous system one. Now I don't have to use the unicast keyword there and I don't have to say autonomous system. I can simply say AS1 and that's sort of a shortcut to get us into the IPv4 address family mode. From here, I'm going to say AF interface and it's gig 012 because that is the interface on router 10 that is facing router nine. And so router nine is going to be, and you can see here at the very, very end, the summary address command. So that's the command we're going to be using, and it's very straightforward. I simply say summary address, and then I drop in 172.16.32.0 slash 22. And I love using the CIDR notation because then we don't have to type out the 255.255.252.0. So this command right here is going to perform the summarization of those four networks and what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look over on router one and you can see we've got a soft resync that has taken place here. It did not tear down the neighbor adjacency. If I say do show IP EIGRP neighbor, we'll see that the adjacency has been up for 25 minutes and 23 seconds. So it's not that the adjacency was torn down. We have a, oops, sorry, we have a graceful restart of the process. So it's safe to summarize and you're not going to take down the adjacency or cause an outage in the network. So if I come over here to router one, you can see, remember, we're debugging the queries here. We've got a lot of activity going on with respect to the queries. But if I was to say show IP route EIGRP and include the 172.16 range, what do we see now? 
Exactly. We see a single summary for those four EIGRP networks. And we've now picked up the summary address. So now we're going to see the true value of summarization. And so what I'm going to do is on router 9, I'm going to come on to router 9. We're going to do something similar that we did on router 1. I'm going to say debug EIGRP packets query detail because we want to see if there's any queries that show up here on router 9. And we're going to take it one step further to the left. We're going to come on to router 8 and do the same thing. Debug EIGRP packets de oops, sorry, not uh, detail query. Uh, detail and we're going to debug on router 8 as well because we want to conclusively prove that the network that's hanging off here and I'm going to I'll keep using the 35 network that the network that's hanging off of router 10 here that we're simulating with the loopback address that router 10 will generate a query and it's going to send it to router 9 but here's what's going to happen on router 9 router 9 is going to look into its rib and it's going to say, do I have an exact match for the 172.16.35.10 slash 32? And remember, that network is now gone from a routing table perspective. We've got a single summary that's being pushed out from router 10 that represents that network space. But router 9 is not going to have that exact network. And so what you're going to see happen, router 9 is going to look into his routing table and he's going to say, I don't have a 172.16.35.10 slash 32. So we're going to get a reply that comes back immediately from router 9 to router 10. And I have bound my query domain to the immediate neighbor, right? That directly connected neighbor to whom I'm performing summarization with. So instead of query messages coming to router eight and to five and to six and everybody over here on the left hand side of this diagram, I have just bound the query domain to router nine, which means I'm going to converge quicker from an enterprise perspective. And I'm not going to have all of the processing and overhead that's going to be taking place on router nine. It's not going to be happening on every single router in the network. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. Let me clear the screen here and let's pull up router nine. In fact, on router 10, let's do this. Let's grab the reply. So do debug EIGRP packet reply detail because we want to see the reply that comes back from router nine and another important thing when we look at that when we use that detail flag in our debug we're actually seeing the tlvs those type length value triplets that eigrp and other routing protocols so famously use in order to extend themselves by just simply implementing new tlvs but in those tlvs specifically with the igrp we are going to see some metrics in there that look very, very large. In fact, they are representative of infinity. In other words, in the reply, I'm going to be replying back saying, hey, can't get there. And the way that router nine will do that is by indicating values that represent infinity in EIGRP. So we've got our reply debug on router 10, we're debugging the query on nine, we're debugging the query on eight, and router one is still doing the debugs on the queries. And let's make sure, let's give a show debug here and confirm that. So yep, we're still debugging. So what we should see is activity between nine and 10, and that is it. That is what limiting the size and the scope of the query domain is all about. So the summary is working. Let's get into interface loopback 35, and let's say shut. And you'll see, we've got the little blue yield sign here, nothing on router eight. Come all the way over here to router one, we've got nothing. So no activity taking place on router one. But let's look at router nine. So here it is, receive the query on gig 012 from my neighbor, router 10. Router 10 is sending this out with values of infinity for the delay and the bandwidth, basically saying, hey, I can no longer get to this network. So we have a reply that comes back and here's the reply. 
router nine immediately replies back to router 10 and you've got the delay at its maximum value representing infinity telling router 10 can't get there sorry and that is the true value of summarization in eigrp is the ability to limit the size and scope of your query domain all right well that is going to wrap up what i guess i will call this lunchtime short on summarization in eigrp and the real benefit Again, it's all about limiting the size and scope of the query domain. And this is actually a question that I ask in interviews for candidates who are coming in. I simply say, can you talk to me about the benefits of summarization in EIGRP to see whether or not they talk about limiting the size and scope of the query domain? All right. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you benefited from this. Now it's time for me to get back to work. Have a great Friday and a great weekend.